Hello, my dear expats, and welcome to this next follow-up video on how to respond to the letters from the finance app with a very common case for all of you when you send remittances to your home country to a person in need. These are called maintenance declarations or maintenance expenses, which are, um, of course, tax deductible on the, there are certain quite strict uh, set of criteria. So for this, let's go on this specific case. Concretely, what you're seeing here is the letter. How do you deal with it? Let's see. It says you have time up to this deadline to supply all of the documentation. It says also, I'm Steuer 2019, the tax assessment of 2019, right? And dear Mr. or Miss, please, bitte reisen Sie für die Steuer, für die Bearbeitung Ihrer Einkommensteuerklärung folgende Unterlagen bei Unterhaltsleistungen an eine im Ausland lebende bedürftige Person. So, a maintenance expenses to a relative of yours which is in need. Information about the person in need. It says, Angaben zur unterstützten Person. Reisen Sie bitte für jede unterstützte Person eine vollständig ausgefüllte vierseitige Unterhaltserklärung ein. Where do you find this uh, maintenance declaration? Easily in the official website from the Finanzamt to find in this document as well. Take a look at it. Public available. Unterhaltserklärung in different languages. Excuse me. It's by Sprach again. Always German and this foreign language. Over here, all of the different languages available up to Spanish, English, among all else. Let's take a look at the rest of the letter. Angaben Seite 1, der Unterhaltsgrund sind von der zuständigen Gemeinde Belde Behörde zu bestätigen, which means that they need an official stamp and um, zeal from the immigration, um, the city office, the registration office, um, as in Germany would be a Stadt and Meldung, Meldebehörde, Stadt, so the municipality, so to say. A public notary as well could be another option. Mm -hmm. Important this is official authority. The it's by Sprache Unterhaltsgrund instead of the internet site in this. Okay, it even says it in here. Bundesfinanzministerium.de zu download bereit. Nachweis der Bedürftigkeit. Geben Sie bitte vorhandenes Vermögen sowie die eigenen Einkünfte und Bezüge der unterstützten Person an und weisen Ihre Angaben nach. Zum Beispiel über Steuerbescheinigungen, Verdienstbescheinigung, Bescheid der Arbeits- und Sozialverwaltung. Of course, if it's in a foreign country, you would have to supply a translation, at best an official translation, not simply one that you did yourself, but um, one that is from a, an authorized uh, translator. If not, you would be having to expect the financiers to accept your informal translation, which could be the case if they want to, but they do not have to. Then, what else do we see here? Nachweis der Unterhaltszahlungen. Gesonderte Empfangsbestätigung der unterstützten Person für jede einzelne Zahlung. Folgende Angaben müssen neben ihrer persönlichen Angabe enthalten sein. Name und Anschrift des Empfängers, Betrag, Übergabedatum, Zahlungsort und Unterschrift des jeweiligen Zahlungsempfängers. What are we talking about here? So, in further explanations from this maintenance declaration, you also have to supply with them with the proof that you have actually done all of these remittances abroad, which means either a bank statement where it says that you this uh, amount of money was monthly being transferred from your account to the receiver's account in your home country, that would be then a good proof. Um, how does this remittance looks like? You were seeing in the X course that it has to be monthly. It has to start at best in January as well. And it has to be on the same date each month. At best also on the same amount. And there is a limit for the remittance in a year that would be actually accepted as a maintenance. Um, something else is that because we're talking about a foreign country, probably it does not have the same type of life uh, quality and uh, expenses cost living standards as germany 
If it's therefore a European country, then probably yes. If it's not, then you will see. That's why Germany divided the whole uh, world in four different sets of states, um, depending on what type of life standards does it have compared to Germany. And on the, this table, which is publicly available also in the tax office website, uh, then you will see how much of your maintenances, how much of the money that you're sending abroad will be actually counting for the tax declaration as deductions. It's important for you to know. The table is also publicly available. I can show it to you right now. There we go. The new table for the 2021 is available in here. We can see it in this link. And there we go. Mm -hmm. This is the table. This would mean that for this set of countries, the German tax office would consider your expenses to be just as um, valid of, um, I mean, height of a remittance as it was in, in Germany. This would be three-fourths of it, this would be one-half of it, and this would be one-fourth of it. You have to find where your country is, where you're sending the remittances, and then also apply your own situation. Now that this is explained, how do we go on filling this form they are requesting? For that, let's go to the official form I was showing with you before, over here, and let's go with a case study and do it ourselves. For sake of the ease for me, I won't do it in Spanish because this is an online course in English. Let's go to the English maintenance declaration for let's say someone living in India. For this, let's say that in this one, we would be filling it for a person in need. So, Let's put this, um, the case being an Indian IT manager earning some 100,000K with his wife earning also 100,000K and sending yearly to his parents who are now in this time already 70 years old and already pensioners living out only from the remittances of their children living in Germany, working their full-time employment. Perfect case. Um, they are 70 already, so they are no longer in working age. They are also pensioners, and they are living solely on these remittances. So a person in need is being found in this case. So for this, let's put first the information about the person sending the remittances. So this is the Indian expert. So let's put here, just for the sake of the matter, um, Indian name, like the gamber. And let's put here over here that this person is called the gamber. And then the surname, let's put the name of this person is Shal. Okay. So this is the uh, residence of this expat here in Germany. Let's put for this like something like really easy. Musterstrasse one. Correct. Right, let's just say one. And let's put over here the city and the postal code. Postal code, let's say 8000 in Munich. Let's put it in German, of course. Mention. Okay. So now it's asking us about the information about the supported person, which means in this case, he's father and mother, let's put first of all, and this is important for both the father and the mother, you have to supply the same maintenance declaration for him and for her. So let's put that the name of the father is and his last name is Shara. Okay. Date of birth, we were saying that this person is already 70 years old. The father would be then, let's copy and paste. Let's put there first. Number 17 now would be in that case, not mistaken, some 52. Right. 
an example on it anyway. So here, place of birth, let's put it Mumbai. And he's still living in Mumbai. And I put here the next in the end. There we go. What relationship does the father has to his son? Of course, the father. Relationship to the applicant. So to the applicant, he is the father. All right, German father. Mm -hmm. Well, so we see here, we have to place a check or a cross in one of these cases. So what is this person? He's married, he's uh, single, he's divorced. What is it? In this case, it is a married couple of parents living in India. So therefore, let's place over here an X in the correct position. Mm -hmm. Almost there. There we go, married. Now, nature of the employment. So what do we go on writing here? If this person is already 70 years old, not working anymore, we can simply place that he is a pensioner. A pensioner. Also in German called renta, right? So therefore, no current employment at all. No activity which would improve his financial needs. For the person living in the household, we were saying before that it was both parents, right? So therefore we would also place the mother. Let's copy and paste this. Let's place a name for the mother, something like, um, mm -hmm. I was thinking like this, Dipti Sharma. So Dipti Sharma is the wife. We can write here simply a Frau or wife. There. It's the only other person living in his household, which our dear expat is also supporting. And in this place, it's exactly what I explained to you before. Um, we need to place now the official stamp from the local reg registration authority. Just in mind the this would mean stamp signature for each one of the people, for each one of the both of the supported persons here placed. It's quite an essential step, which should not be forgotten. The details given before, both pertaining to the person, because in this, we are now confirming that all of this information is real, that this is an actual person, not only said by you, but also by the official authority in your home country. Now, following up to this, economic situation of the supported person, income and expenditure. In here, we would have to place, of course, we are um, talking about the year 2019, in this case, when you were supporting your parents here as well, 2019. Now, going up next, income in home currency. As a supporting person, I had the following income and expenditure. Of course, if, if they are only living from your income, we don't have to break our heads so much and simply write in here, overall zero. That means apart from what you were sending as remittance, they had no other type of income. What would be the consequence if, if they do have an income? Now let's put for this example that this person had a pension as we are saying that they are pensioners. Um, what would happen is that if this person has an income uh, from her pension um, or his pension higher than 624, each one of the additional euros would um, set back your remittances. So in, the, in this place, therefore, it's important that if you want your remittances to be considered fully, that we don't write an amount higher in the whole year than uh, this income. So for the full year, we can write up to, let's say, 600 euros, and it would have no um, negative consequence for you in your income tax declaration as in regards of the deduction you are able to make. Already this one explained. So what happens is if you write more than this, less of your remittance will be taken into consideration. So agriculture, let's put no, let's put zero, let's put zero. 
court. This is all the perfect case in which your remittances will account fully. Social benefits, zero, zero, zero. I mean, I hope in India it's not like that, but this would create only benefits to you in this case. Same for your expenditures. If you are making now zero income, you're of course making zero expenses because you don't have any income to supply that for. And expenditures, let's say that you're spending all of the 600 of your pension yearly. Let's go back to zero over here because we are explaining that there was no other income over here being made from agriculture, from trade or independent activities, basically a business. And zero here in the end. Now, this over here I wrote as if it would be in euros. Of course, if you are talking about India, I know that they have INRs. I don't know exactly what is the current change, what is the current value for one INR in euros, but let's put simply an example because I know it's more uh, that it's about 6,000 here INR, and that in turn it's 600 euros. Of course, you may know way more the current change. So, Put of course here six thousand INR. It's uh, six hundred euro, and with that we'll be translating this form correctly. So well, explanation now assets. Going on the part of assets, this it says important. The details supplied above must be verified by the following documents. For example, the tax notice, the pension notice, notice by the relevant employment authority or social authority with regards to social benefits received from the state where they have been refused notice of non-entitlement by the authorities that all has to be backed up and checked by the legal authority certified by this stamp official one mm -hmm. now going on to the part of assets what happens under this constellation as a supported person i had the following assets in the year 2019 we were saying right so nature of the assets explanation value in the home currency what do you have to take into account for this if this one father of my dear expat has cash assets or any sorts of assets outside means externally from his home more than 5, 000, 15, 000, euros in this year if he's married with his wife, then we are talking about 31,000 euros, then uh, that would cause a problem for um, this expat because he would no longer be a person which actually needs his support. He has enough assets to cover and subsist for himself. Therefore, in the perfect case, you would be talking about a person who has less cash assets as well as other different types of assets, less than 15,500 euros. So actually, a uh, much a low asset person not to say poor person right i'm telling you this because if you are writing that this uh, father for example has some fifteen thousand euros in income which is of course more than fifteen thousand five hundred you won't be having your remittances accepted as proper deductions from your tax declaration so in this case we would say that the other value of assets for this one person it's most the perfect ideal case 5000 euros 5000 euros all in cash that's as much as this person has so euro let's put it in INR again you may have the current exchange rate 5000 INR value in home currency over here right the total value of the assets let's put it here out of which now you have to break it down on the how are they being composed how much it is out of a house how much it is out of the agriculture how much is out, out of for the real property and all else so as i told you the only one that is not really relevant for your parent to be considered or not a needed person is the own house so in here basically you can write as much as possible uh, we say for example that your own house is as much worth as 50,000 euros, which would be this much in INR in this case, right? Over here. It wouldn't count anyway because it's an exception. The own house, the own house does not mean that, that uh, your parent is not in need. 
So here, explanation, and the rest, I am saying it again, in the ideal case, would be zero. Land owned zero. Zero, nothing to be explained over here. Agriculture zero as well. Zero, zero, no applying, not applying. So my name all else zero, right? For the real property zero. It's completely a person living solely on the remittances from their children living in Germany. Other assets also zero. And over here also zero. My assets are sufficient to meet my subsisting needs. What is the legal, the, the logical, the logical conclusion from all what we have seen now? Of course, is to put no. Mm -hmm. So therefore, we're gonna go here and tick the checkbox on no. And my assets are not sufficient to fulfill my subsisting needs. Mm -hmm. Now, going on the next part, we are seeing here the part other details. When did you receive your support for the first time? In this, we can write not only the year 2019, because it could be also that you were supporting your parents previously. You were living in Germany, for example, 2018 or 17, and you were back then also supporting your parents. So for that, let's go over here and let's write, let us write, when did you receive the support from your child for the first time? Let's put it as if you were supporting them back then from the month of Mm -hmm. We're going to write January. Or January. In, let's say, the year 2016. That's when you started and you have continued to do so. When did you receive the support for the first time? There we go. Now, continue over here. How and by whom were the payments being made? Please explain. That's from your side. So how were you sending these remittances? In the perfect case, you would be sending it from your bank account. So you would be saying, yeah, so, because this is uh, going to be signed by your father. Your father is called Nitin. So you would be writing here, my son was sending. monthly these remittances through bank transfers from his local account in Germany his income was generated through his, his full-time employment, which translated to German would be mein Sohn hat mich äh, monatlich diese Unterhaltszahlungen durch Banküberweisungen über sein lokales Konto in Deutschland. Sein Ankommen wurde generiert durch seine Vollzeit angestellte Tätigkeit. Mm -hmm. So that would be then a good explanation for this. In here you can have it in English, in here you can have it in German. But also be a good idea for your own use if you can put it here also in German. So going up next, next question. What are we seeing here is how did you meet your subsistence needs before support payments were made. In this case, let's say the, par the father is saying for my pension, I was a public servant for the 
Indian government earning a full time income together with my wife was really the same. So in this case, the father because before entering pension age, he was working as a public servant for the Indian government. Now, do you live in a household together with other supported people? Yes, indeed. We were saying before it's with his wife. So let's copy and paste over here. And let's tick here on yes, living with another supported person. If so, please indicate the name of these persons and uh, your familiar relationship to them. We already did this before, but as you see, we are covering here all of the different cases. That would be, for example, if um, this uh, father was also living with other children of his or his brother, who knows what else. So here we would say no, he was living with only Deepti Sharma and his wife or Ephraim. So do other persons contribute to your support? So in this ideal case, this son living in Germany and earning his full-time employment salary is an only child. So no other people are contributing to this uh, parent's support. So in here, we would say no. Ideal case, I'm saying also why? Because if, let's put the case, other people living as well in Germany were supporting the same foreign household, what would happen, the consequence of this is that the different remittances to the parent would be divided now um, along these people. Um, that means that your remittances would not count as full deductions, but only um, in consideration of also the remittances that these other people also did to them, uh, which would come to your negative consequence. If so, please indicate the name and address of the persons and also how much support was or is paid. Mm -hmm. Not applicable. We are saying only child here. Supporting. Then let's go here. Why were you not only occasionally employed? So here we can go along and further explaining, further explaining the need of uh, this uh, father. So in here we could say, the same, the ideal case, I am a pensioner, no longer in working age, but now a bit of, a, of an even more drastic situation. Currently, I have diabetes and I have a disability complication to perform manual or labor work. Let's say that this person had uh, some complication in his uh, legs, in his motricity, and now he cannot really move. So that's why he has to stay for a long time um, still at home. And therefore he cannot perform other types of different jobs, which would enable him to receive some income. So in this ideal case, he is uh, completely a person in need through all of the criteria possible, which would then enable you to consider this maintenance as tax deductions for your German income in your tax declaration. So because this part over here is not applying, it says, if so, please indicate name and address. Of course, not applying. This is the only child supporting. Now, if we are saying I'm a pensioner no longer in working age and currently I have diabetes and a disability, disab disabled people normally have a credential or an ID for disability. In this case, you could also, you could also be uh, able to supply this such ID together with your maintenance declaration. All of this information about your father in need, passport, ID of disability, diabetes, 
all of this would only improve your case because if once it gets approved as a person in need for this one year, you have a much better ease so that in the future, without any complication, this person would continue to be supported as long as he is also living and you are sending the remittances. So all of this additional documentation would be going in with your maintenance declaration. And finally, we see here declaration. I hereby declare that the foregoing details are correct to the best of my knowledge and belief. Location date and signature of the supported person. This for the case of the father would go in here, as in Mumbai, the date and the signature of the supported person certified by the legal authority. Important, the details supplied by the supported person are deemed to the details supplied by the taxpayer. Incorrect details can lead to penalties and administrative fines. Notes, certification must be issued for each person supported and submitted as an annex to the income tax declaration. I said so before, right? And the submission of the certification does not constitute a legal claim to the tax reduction applied for. The tax offices may require further evidence to be submitted in the individual cases. So it's said. So the DNI, the passport, as for the identifications of these parents in need, as well as in this case, the disability identification. What else do we see here? The, all of the remittances from your bank account, all of the bank transfers sent month by month on the same amount, let's say if it's 9,600 and 800 euros per month, beginning on January and ending in December, that would be what you would be needing for this case. As it was all requested in the letter, fulfilling now the criteria for a person in need, and this would now completely count as deductions for your income tax declaration. And in this way, you can have it so that your remittances are also helping you, yourself, living in Germany, and also your parents through the income tax return. And that in turn would conclude on how to explain a really essential part and also emotional part for you into your income tax declaration as you are experts helping your parents and relatives abroad. And you want, of course, this to be recognized into your income tax returns positively.